Welcome to Engaging Community, a show about everyday residents making a difference in our community. I'm your host, Emma Agnew, and my guests today are Stephen Trotter and Frank Plusinski with The Forge. Welcome, guys. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Uh, Stephen, would you tell us what The Forge is? Sure. So The Forge is a new um, Jonesboro-based uh, uh, grassroots initiative, I guess you could call us, but we are uh, a group of community, um, it's a group of community residents here in Jonesboro, uh, but also from the region. So we want to make sure that we um, we do include everybody from Northeast Arkansas, um, but it's a, a group of community residents coming together from different angles, uh, with different initiatives. Uh, we are applying for 501c3 status, um, so we have different initiatives, including a local food network, um, a makerspace network, um, business incubation, so as far as business acceleration, mm -hmm. and then also a community enrichment group. Um, okay. And so all those different groups were meeting individually uh, probably about uh, two months ago. Yeah, three months. Yeah, so, so. About so, yeah. so all those groups were kind of meeting individually here in Jonesboro. Okay. Um, and so I got tied into those groups individually. Um, Frank was uh, involved in those groups. And when we started to go after funding for the projects that those groups wanted to um, take over or, or take under, um, then when I started to look for funding, I realized pretty quickly that we needed to have a 501c3 or some type of nonprofit uh, mm -hmm. to go after grants. Okay. Um, and so the best way to go about that, because there were so many different groups, was to form an umbrella 501c3. And so that's where the Forge came into it. So okay. um, we formed the, the 501c3 called the Forge as an umbrella 501c3 to um, go over all these groups. Okay. Um, so what is the relationship between the Forge and the North Jonesboro Neighborhood Initiative? You're right. So when we first started up, um, we had several projects that we wanted to work on pretty quickly so we could have some things that people could tangibly see what we're doing. Mm -hmm. A couple of those were um, a small seed library. Uh, we wanted to build a couple of very small greenhouses. Um, there are a couple of those things that we wanted to especially do in low income area, um, uh, low income areas here in Jonesboro. Okay. And so uh, naturally you were a good contact for us with an um, NJ&I. Um, some community gatherings were good places to um, interface with residents that might need those things. And so um, the NJ and I was a perfect fit for us to work with. Since we are grassroots, we wanted to work directly with residents. Okay. And so those things have been successful. We are in the process of building those greenhouses. Uh, we already have a very small seed library. We already distributed seeds to the local food network group. Uh, we met over at One Love Coffee House and distributed some seeds amongst the members of the local food network. Um, and so I assume everybody's already got their seeds kind of started. Mm -hmm. um, I know we're, we're going to probably gonna have a late start this year of getting everything in the ground. Um, yeah. It's been so wet and cold. Right, so. yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, I was telling my husband that I would wanted to do a little small backyard garden. I'm not really a gardener, but you guys kind of inspired me. <laughs> yeah. So I thought I would try a little small backyard garden, and that's what he was saying, that it's, you know, it's so wet. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, but we're going to work something out and see what we can get started. Okay, thank you. Could I tap you. into that a little sure, bit? Cause, sure, sure. Uh, when we talk about the relationship between the NJ and I, or the North Jonesboro Neighborhood Initiative and the Forge, NJI was really the inspiration to start it. Right. It is the awesome. thing, you know, through the work we were doing with the gardens up there and a few of the projects that you were doing, that kind of gave me the incentive to say, you know, we can do much better than this if we bring in other portions of the community and mm -hmm. they establish themselves so they can be of great assistance. Mm -hmm. And most of these things he's talking about, you can see that things like the makerspace or the incubator can become very personal. Mm -hmm. Right. And just that. And uh, we want to keep this strictly based on community support level. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, one of our dreams, um, just to explain kind of the, the, I guess, end goal of that would be we would love to see and across Northeast Arkansas, like we've said, but especially in like low income areas, people that don't have access to a lot of these resources, they may have never been in a business incubator. They may have, may have never been in a maker space. Um, they may have never even been in a community garden. Um, and that goes for a lot of people, but especially in low income neighborhoods. Right. And so we would love to see someone come into, especially as a child or a teenager, come into this ecosystem that the Forge is setting up 
come into the community garden and eat local, seasonal, healthy food, mm -hmm. um, have an idea for a product as a kid, right. create that in the maker space where they come into an area where it has 3D printers, they prototype this product that they just dream up uh, with the assistance of our staff in the maker space. Uh, one of the, the, the things that we'd like to do is build a small maker space on the north side, mm -hmm. a small maker space on the uh, downtown area. Uh, one in Pocahontas, one in Perigold, one in Brooklyn, and we're already making connections in those areas. Okay. Um, so, you know, come from the community gardens, eating healthy, go into the makerspace, go from the makerspace with that business idea, then go into the business incubator. Right. And we help them turn that prototype of an idea for a product into a business. Yes. And then t get a patent and turn that pro product into a business, a replicatable, scalable business, and then they work for themselves. Right. And we've helped them achieve the American dream, and hopefully we help that, we, we break that that cycle of a whole generation not being able to achieve that dream. Right. right. Um, and so that's, and, and that's all been done by community members. Right. Yeah. Good. And so good. That, that's kind of our whole goal yeah. of where we yeah. want to get to. Yeah, and honestly, okay. we, you know, we've kind of gotten to a position where we rely on a big corporation to provide us with everything. Right. We, virtually, when everybody complains right now about the 1% versus the 90 to 9%, we forget that we are implicit and also in this. Right, and we are right. part of that system. Yeah. So this is about taking back those abilities within right. the community to produce for ourselves. Yeah. We have, we have right. the talent. Right. We, and I we like definitely that. have the yeah. talent. Uh, I want to come back to the makerspace in just a minute, but mm -hmm. right now I want, um, if Frank could talk a little bit about the uh, local food network Certainly. and what the goal and mission of, of that is. Well, we just start with, you know, as I said before, it started on the north side working with the gardens up there. Uh, we established two or three up there, but in the process of doing that, I noticed how during the summer there are so many little pocket gardens on the north side mm -hmm. that everybody's working with. Uh, but I saw a lack of variety in what they were doing. I was seeing, you know, basically everybody was doing exactly the same crop. And I don't think we can develop anything on that. Mm -hmm. We need to get to a greater product. And I thought if we can set up something where through the makerspace and the incubator that we could have the technology to support better development in these gardens. Mm -hmm. And then we integrate that together with the agricultural people and say, we do things you know like we're going to be doing the seed library that's this small one that's mm -hmm. our starter all okay tell me that. about a seed library i mean from the name you can kind of figure out but what does what is the seed library what you do is everybody has some limited access to certain types of seeds or you can get them and preserving those seeds mm -hmm. is probably the object to have a readily available supply of a great variety of different seeds. We're going to aim for mostly heirloom seeds, which okay. means the old true fruits and true vegetables, and try to bring, because they are so much richer in nutrients, we're right. going to try to bring those back. Okay. And turn this into you know, a really a base for producing good food, Eventually, we'll get to the point where we can do it through the farmers' markets, and eventually, after that, once we establish that relationship and it starts working for us, we'll mm -hmm. go on to the eventual goal is to set up a, a few, or at least one to start with, commercial kitchens that be available to everyone who has a garden in the community. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're already interested in doing here and in several of the, the small towns around here. Once we do that, we can get to the point where we can develop a co-op and we can virtually take this thing about self-support and turn it in, actually into a profit-making mm -hmm. situation for people that have the gardens. Okay. And just to explain the logistics of the seed library, the way that that works is almost like a library in itself, right? So you, we started with a base of seeds that have been donated by the community. And we put those into a system where um, you can come in, borrow the seeds, you plant your produce in your garden. And so let's say you borrow enough seeds, 10 or 20 seeds, right? Okay. So then you plant your produce, you grow it in your garden, then when you harvest it, 
you return that number oh, and okay. you receive the seed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so you may check out. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I like so, that. So you may check out a total of 20 seeds, but then you return like 100 seeds. Yeah. And so yeah. Our, our seed library grows. And right. So one of the things we're, we're trying to do is like work with the local library mm -hmm. and see if we can. A, lo a lot of these seed libraries, even here in Arkansas, have used the local public library. Mm -hmm. um, not only their hardware, but also as far as like a, um, an old card catalog, mm -hmm. but also their software to use. This, that software to check in and check out seeds. So then you get some rudimentary data as far as how many seeds are checked out, who's checking them in and out, okay. and then you get some information you can use for a grant mm -hmm. so that you can grow that system. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's that's how it works. Yeah. You get a building seed library, yeah. um, and then you try to control you know so that you have heirloom seeds, you have non-GMO seeds, right. um, and so you have um, a selection of different types of seeds right. so that you can go in and truly select, okay, do I want this type of strawberry or this type mm -hmm. of strawberry? Or okay. do it? And then hopefully you would have a section of tomatoes. Mm -hmm. So you can select if you want low acid tomatoes or high right. acid tomatoes, things like that. You mentioned um, non-GMO, and the, I know the first time I heard you talk about non-GMO, I was like, what's GMO? Right. So, yeah. so and part of this, and so, part of this in, entire uh, endeavor is education as well. Right. So mm -hmm. uh, take just, just quickly, uh, we don't want to talk about it a whole lot right, right <laughs> now, but just quickly, Tell people like me who might not be familiar with that terminology what GMO is. Yeah, well, we won't talk about it very much because it's a highly political right, subject, but right. it's genetically modified organisms. So right. um, there are companies that have patents on that technology. They, they have modified the organisms so that they are um, resistant to different um, insects, um, so that they can use different... Um, chemicals on them so that they don't have to use certain chemicals on them. Mm -hmm. There's lots of different reasons for mm -hmm. modifying them. Mm -hmm. um, some of the, the, the DNA that they are modifying is the original plant DNA. Right. Um, some DNA that's introduced into them mm -hmm. is foreign DNA. Right. Um, so there's lots of different ways of modifying them and you can get on the internet and look that information up. Right. One of the initiatives that they're trying to pass in the United States is that, um, that the food that you're eating, which most of it here in the United States is GMO, mm -hmm. and you just don't realize it. Right. They're trying to get it labeled, right. so that at least you have the choice to eat GMO or not GMO. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so we would just want to try to accomplish the same thing in the seed library. If, right. if you could make that choice for yourself, mm -hmm. if you want to plant GMO or not GMO. Right. And, and to do that, we would need to get a grant because there's testing involved. You have to test those seeds mm -hmm. so that you can keep the, the seeds separate. And that, right. that, that testing, mm -hmm. um, essentially genetic testing, yeah. is expensive. Yeah. So. That was just so interesting to me when you talked about that. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But, you know, one of my favorite quotes, and I know you guys are familiar with it too, is this Urban garden, Gardener on YouTube, and I can't think of his name right now, uh, that says that if a kid grows tomatoes, a kid will eat tomatoes. That's right, absolutely. And if a kid grows carrots, a kid will eat carrots. That's right. Because, yeah. you know, a lot of times when people have children, they are quick to say, oh, uh, he won't eat that or she won't eat that. But if they get involved in growing their own food, they'll eat what they grow. That's right. Yeah. yeah, and we've seen that even here locally at the health and wellness school. I mean, what, my son went to the health and wellness school, mm -hmm. and I've seen that happen with with my son. I mean, there are lots of things that he would have never eaten right. if he had not been involved with the garden at the school. And he went in every day and took care of the rabbits and took care of the garden. Mm -hmm. right. And there were things that you know he grew and they tried in the kitchen over there. Mm -hmm. And you know he came home and said, "I tried eggplants. I didn't right. like them, right. but I tried them." Right. I would have never been able to try to get him to try eggplants, right. but he grew them, <laughs> right. so he tried them. Right. And the same rule will apply with the maker space, too. Mm -hmm. You bring the kids in, you start them off by doing things with like Lego blocks right. or just on paper. Then you build up to using the 3D printer mm -hmm. and all the other things. You know, So it's like, a, again, to say, gee, I didn't think I could do this, but right. you know what? I can. That's right, right, right. Yeah. right. So um, tell us how we can get in touch with you guys if someone wants to yeah. reach you. Yeah, so we've, we've made it pretty easy. Um, you can, uh, first of all, go to our website. If you have internet access, you can go to forgearkansas.com. And at the very top of the website, go uh, click on Join the Conversation. When you go to the Join the Conversation page, we have a link to every Facebook group and Facebook page you can link to there. We have um, our, all of our members, all of our executive committee members um, who are pretty public, like Frank, myself, um, Aaron Houston, uh, Amber Carswell, there's a lot of us that you'll see at all of the different meetings. We all have really simple email addresses. It's just Stephen at Forge Arkansas, Frank at ForgeArkansas.com. Um, so if you run into one of us at a meeting and you want to contact us, just email us. Um, but the, really the best way is ForgeArkansas.com and then click on Join the Conversation um, because all the links are on that one page. Um, and what we've done is we've set up 
different Facebook groups for each one of the departments. So if you're interested in um, the local food network, you can go to the Forge Foods group. If you're interested in makerspace, you can go to Forge Labs. If you're interested in the business incubator, you can go to Forge Factory. And if you're interested in just the community enrichment, like maybe public arts or the grants or um, the general just uh, like pop-ups or street painting or anything kind of headspacey um, and artsy, then you can go to Forge Ahead. Um, so that all the different departments have their own discussion groups on Facebook where you can get in there and just start talking to people that are like-minded. Okay, okay. Um, so uh, what wonderful things can we expect from the Forge in the near future? So on top of our meetings, we have weekly meetings that you can come and join. Uh, we have lots of things going on. We have pop-ups um, that are popping up. We have lots of projects that we're working on, especially now that it's getting warm. We have lots of things that are coming up. Okay. Anything else we need to cover, guys? Did we get it all in? I think that's it. I, I mean, think we, we're pretty secure. We, with we, we still have you know lots of room for people to be involved because this is community-oriented. We want everybody that wants mm -hmm. to be involved to be involved. Mm -hmm. um, we have our meeting spaces changed from week to week because we'd like to involve local restaurants, um, local gathering spaces. So just make sure you sign up on the website. We have a newsletter. We, um, and so our meetings usually consist of 20, 25 people, but we'd love to see every meeting have 100 people because um, right. we want as much input as we can. So. And um, this group is totally open and free to anyone who That's wants right. to participate. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yep. Yeah, they even let me come to Makerspace, and I don't know how to make very yeah. much, but and they we, let well, me Well, we haven't set the price for you yet. <laughs> yeah. And we encourage everybody to come to the different groups, even if they're not, they don't know anything about it. So we have the Makerspace people will come to the Forge Foods meeting right. just to see what it's all about. Just, to, just, just to see how yeah. everything interacts with each other. We've had some of the Makerspace people came to the Forge Foods group and realized they could make food sensors to put in the community gardens using Arduino and Raspberry oh. Pi chips. And they could make wow. remote, uh, like, uh, uh, what is it, um, uh, acidity sensors, moisture sensors, things like that, to put in the community gardens to remotely censor how the gardens are doing using technology. Wow. wow. Um, and so that's, that's, what, pretty cool. that's what we're all about, is cross-pollinating right. those technologies and, and talents mm -hmm. across mm -hmm. the groups. And so we encourage people that might not feel like that's their comfort zone right. to go to the other groups. Right, right. Um, and that's what Forge Ahead, the community enrichment group, is all about, mm -hmm. is encouraging those groups to overlap. Right. So. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much thank for, you so much. So for much, being Emma. our very first guest on Engaging Community. I'm your host, Emma Agnew, and thanks for watching. <laughs>